Hi guys, we are back under RB Bridge today. Test riding this Lex Moto Assault. So, difference between this and the Iska, both exactly the same bike, same engine apart from the front end. Assault has the indicators built in, the Iska has them on the side of the bike and the front end slightly different. On the Iska you get road tyres, on the Assault you get high raised mud guard small rear mud guard and you've got the two-part knobbly tyre so you've got a knobbly to the front and a semi knobbly to the rear good chunky rear on this tyre so test ride for Fred this one older rider he decided to come in and take up the life of motorcycling so you've got a main stand side stand let's bring up the display rev counter speed time gear indicator switch and your elapsed miles and your fuel tanks right there in the centre all the standard controls kill switch start button main beam dip beam indicators and the horn and to the back not a pass light it actually activates the hazard light so don't go for your pass light because you're going to end up putting your hazard lights on so hazard lights are to the rear nice wide set mirrors good view behind me exceptionally good view to the traffic behind about quarter of my shoulder in the mirror so pretty darn good firing it up it's got a nice little purr to it now the gearbox on these is lovely and smooth as well and having a semi knobbly on means we can get out and do some country lanes well not so much country lanes but the old village lanes and for everybody that asks me uh, Oh, your video quality and your audio has improved. Yes, I took some advice from a guy called The Peaky Biker. He has a show on a Wednesday night called The Midweek Mumble. So if you go in and check that out, Wednesday night's Midweek Mumble, 8 o'clock on YouTube. You can see his channel. Now, he's got some really good people on his channel every week. So you can always go and check that out. Mine is on a Friday. And if you want to come along, you can come and join in on the chat on that. So, I did have a GoPro 10 using Rode wireless mics and it picked up a hell of a lot of wind noise and obviously the Rode mics had a little uh, purple panda mic is what they call it built into my left cheek pad with what was called a dead cat so it's a little furry screen that goes over your mic and it still picked up a lot of wind noise the LS2 helmets aren't particularly noisy but they are very comfortable now this is what is called a hybrid helmet which means that the chin bit fits up and goes straight over the top of my head so I can ride open face. And after all the issues that we had with GoPro, a lot of people said to me, you want to go and use the Osmo Action 4 that is made by DJI. So we bit the bullet, we went and spent nearly £600. I got a bit of a discount from DJI, thank you very much guys. And... On the front of the helmet now, still on my original chin mount, I have an Osmo 4 and that comes with a Bluetooth wireless mic. Now my Bluetooth wireless mic, I did have it on the side of the crash helmet in the road mount and still using the Lavalier mic. And a lot of advice people said to me, no, get shot of that mic. So we got shot and the DJI is now inside the crash helmet just in front of my face and a lot of people take the clip off and put them on magnetic mounts mine actually clips into my vent rubbers so literally just drop the clip in the back of the vent rubber when my front vent is and it does the job still picks up a little bit of wind noise but it means I can talk a lot quieter so I'm not shouting like I normally do to uh, get over all the wind noise that is there so 40 mile an hour test ride we are two miles in and we've got another eight to do so over two test rides but this bike is absolutely gorgeous very easy to use very easy to control and with those semi knobblies you know it's going to grip the roads in wet conditions so it's a great all-round bike especially if you're doing country lanes personally i prefer the isca i just like the feel of the isca now the seat on this does tuck you forward into the tank it has got a sloping seat that brings you up into the front of the tank so it is comfortable but it does tend to obviously when you're riding and you get a few bumps you start rocking forward into the petrol tank so it does tuck you into the back of the petrol tank which is a good thing 
for pottering around town, doing your bits and pieces. It's a good little all-round bike. Now these have a five-speed box on them, as most of the Lex Motos do, apart from the LXR and the LXS, which have a six. But a five-speed box. The spacing on the gearbox is very good. So you can roll most roundabouts in second or third gear. Fight your way around all the potholes, Jesus. Milton Keynes, the city of roundabouts and now potholes. But it's a good all-round bike just for running around. Very easy to see the display, very easy to see. Miles an hour, even in bright sunlight or in the uh, dismal conditions that we're in today. It's literally just stopped raining about an hour ago, so we're out on a test ride. And I am back to do a chain and sprocket on an LXS. And we'll do a little video on that one when uh, we get onto the ramp. I'm going to start doing a few more of these uh, maintenance videos now. And showing people exactly what to do. But the main thing you should be doing is your chain tension. You should be checking your chain once a week. And the one that we had in, it was absolutely slack as hell. How it didn't jump off the sprocket, I do not know, because uh, when we actually pulled the chain, I could lift it clear of the sprocket and move the chain to the side. So God knows how it managed to stay on the bike. But he brought it in complaining that it was making horrible crunching noises on first and second gear when he was pulling away. Well, it will do, because your chain is flapping around like a proverbial lunatic. So we're going to go into town, we're going to do a bit of round town riding and take in the wonderful sights of Bletchley. Oh, happy days. So loads of massive stores down here. And it's all mostly industrial units, loads and loads of these industrial units down here. And then we go into, obviously, Bletchley Town Centre. And it's starting to pick up and blow a gale again. Only one type of gale I like, and uh, that is Gale Tilsley. No, I'm not going to mention Corrie. <laughs> right. So down there, that is where you would find IKEA and ASDA, and loads of shops here. Oh, they've just—they've got a Greg's up now. We've got a Pure Gym, we've got a Boots, Sports Direct, and of course my favourite one, Pets at Home. Shoulder check. Another dirty great pothole. Stick off to the left, RB, and avoid them ones. I know where they are now. And of course Tesco in Bletchley. Just at the back of there is the garage. Oh, hark at that wind, it is blowing a good one. But we are planted, there is a little bit of movement off the bike when I do get hit by a crosswind. But it is quite a, a good weight of a bike. It's around about, I think, about 126 or 128 kilos, this one and obviously with the weight of a rider on but uh, 32 inch legs sit comfortably under the tank and you may notice I've got my dirty overalls on today so I've literally jumped straight out of the workshop straight onto a bike and we are out and I've got my armour on underneath my overalls I tend to if I'm riding in the summer forget the bike jacket and I literally just put on a Nomex uh, motocross shell that is sitting underneath my overalls, comfortable enough for me to use and it's, I've got some chest protection but obviously nothing on my arms so should I go down I'll probably end up breaking an arm, breaking a wrist, whatever but at 30 mile an hour at least you know your main organs are protected and obviously that leads on to how much protection should I have come on little car If you can afford it, get the best. If not, the bare minimum should be a decent jacket with some CE armour. Majorly, you get some gloves. You must have gloves on a bike. First thing that's going to go down is your hands, so do get yourself some decent gloves. And obviously I've got my Kawasaki gloves, and they have 
the armour to the back, the armour to the fingers, and nice big hand pads bump that protect me when I go down. And I do love these Kawasaki gloves so much so that I have three pairs of them. I've still got two brand new pairs in in uh, in bags at home. So once they start getting a little bit worn or a little bit sweaty, I tend to bin them and just put another pair on for the price of like 45 quid. You can't have too many pairs of gloves. Leg protection, decent pair of Kevy jeans or a decent suit, base layer suit or a, get yourself some uh, textiles but anything that's going to protect your knees and of course your hips when you go down and to top it all off get yourself uh, if you can't afford bike boots just go and get yourself a good pair of steel capped work boots or even a pair of Doc Martens something with some am ankle protection on that is what you need but the basics helmet jacket boots gloves and a pair of trousers you can pick up some really decent stuff for probably around about 200 quidish and of course, uh, unless you're one of the big bike riders where you go out and spend five, six hundred quid, then that's what you're going to do. But I would say at least spend at least two hundred quid. Don't go buy an, uh, a crash helmet off of AliExpress or uh, eBay. Even if it does say on the label, oh, it's it's got a CE mark, it's got a kite mark, it's ECE approved. Yes, anybody can print stickers off and stick them on a crash helmet. And some of the stickers that you get now do look very legit. But uh, all you got to do, just put sharp rating, put the name of the helmet and just put sharp rating. All helmets now are sharp rated, which is obviously why I spent a shed load of money on my LS2 crash helmet. I've got one brain and I'd like to protect the uh, couple of brain cells that I have got. Otherwise one will get a little bit lonely on his own. But that is the thing to do. Get yourself a, a decent crash helmet. And you can pick up a decent crash helmet for 50, 60 quid these days. Unless, of course, you want to go and spend absolute fortunes. But I would say, if you can afford it, get yourself one of the well-known brands. LS2, Arai, Shoei, Shark. There's loads of big bike brands helmets out there. So just go and get yourself one of those. And obviously for storage, if you can't uh, afford it, the top box or anything just get yourself a biker's backpack you can get one of those for about 50 60 quid or even a little rucksack but just make sure that you're not putting anything too heavy or dangerous in your rucksack because if you do go down whatever's in the rucksack is going to uh, smack you in the back so be careful that or get yourself a little uh, leg bag to put your phone wallet and your cigarettes in or whatever and you can pick one of those up for about 15 quid. Just straps around your leg like a gun holster, around your belt and your trousers. That will do exactly the same job if you're just carrying something nice and easy. Right, we are going to go down. Do a bit of your carriage weight. We've got six miles on the bike. We need a couple more. Get out the way. I've got an indicator on you, a bell end. We're going to ride down here, pop down to my favourite little bit of park and see how the sticker board's going on. And then while I'm down here, wave to my neighbour Zoe, who's probably, no, she's working today. My favourite venue, the Rainbow Bus, Pink Punters, what a great night you're going to have in there. So, let's just wander into here. EV charging station, they spent, I think, around about £80,000 putting this in. <laughs> it's not being used, is it? Right, quick U-turn. And it does U-turn very, very quickly. What's the sticker board look like? It's coming along. There's a couple more on there. I spot stickers. So, if you're down at Dobby's in Bletchley, 
That is the EV charging station. Look for the big green hut. Between the two units, you will find the sticker board. So everything is all in there. So all the big bikers have all got their stickers on. So if you want to come and add a sticker, you're welcome to do so. But that is the sticker board and it's uh, starting to make uh, a little bit of fame at the moment. That's one of our drivers. <laughs> How are we doing? I'm having a meet with someone. You're on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so that's the charging station. This is Steve from Motorserve. He delivers to our place. I shall see you later. <laughs> oh, that's quite handy to catch up. And uh, good old boy Steve is. <laughs> Steve is responsible for... Uh, dropping me my cigarettes off so uh, he tends to be oh I've got you some cigarettes do you want them my friend brought them in on the boat and I'm like yes lovely so that's where I get me cheap cigarettes from as well while he's delivering his parts for me good old Steve I love him he's brilliant right we're gonna head back to the garage the sticker board's coming along nicely time we get back we'll have seven miles on the bike and then we can start stripping down the LXS and changing the uh, sprockets and chain up, which is going to take me about an hour. Nice easy job for me this afternoon. And then, hopefully, Vincent is coming in this afternoon for his service. Go on, that's it. Block the roundabout. It would have to be a taxi driver, wouldn't it? And the one and only Skyline Taxis, the scourge of Milton Keynes. Well done. Very clever. Let's go. Your exit is blocked. Do not block the roundabout. There's always one. Yet another one that's got his uh, license out of a cereal box. Right, so we're back to the garage. Test ride done on the Assault for Fred. A little bit of a waffle. It's Wednesday, so uh, we will see you tonight on the Peaky Mahi live stream. Friday, my live stream. And of course, this Saturday, Jamie from Jamie's Biking Adventures is coming down with RB. And I'm no doubt we'll do uh, a few YouTube shorts and a bit of video. Bike show this Sunday at Eclipse. So if you are coming down top end of Tavistock Street, this is where we are. Look for the big yellow sign. We have got the Henry Allen Trust coming. Mental Health Motorcycle. Plus all the TikTokers and the YouTubers. And the yard is going to be clear of cars because we're going to have all the bikes out including my Harley and that VMAX as well so we're back in I've got lots to do whatever you're doing have yourself a good one and until the next time when we're out riding with RB be well ride safe and as always it's a big goodbye from me <laughs>